What is going on everybody? Brian Man here, Hands-On Auto Training. Guys, we're doing a little uh, part two of the Maco Maximus 4.0 uh, scan tool system, specifically talking about the scope setup. Uh, guys, this is like my sixth take with this. I'm working with some other equipment that I am trying to set up for video work, so uh, bear with me if uh, something goes wrong. I'm not retaking this again. This is the final go at it. But anyways, I wanted to share with you guys uh, some of the comments. Uh, part of the YouTube uh, community that is so awesome is when we have other technicians from across the world commenting on different things about the scope. Uh, guys, this is the, I guess you call it the Think Tool platform. Top Don has a scope, uh, or should I say a scan tool system set up just like this as well. Um, so if you have any of those products, be sure to watch the previous video because that information will probably help you get set up and running with a scope quickly. Now, one of the other comments that we had was about the uh, rotation rulers. And I'm gonna share with you what I'm doing to try to make that work, but I haven't been able to get it going yet. So let's go ahead and do a live demonstration on this vehicle here. We have this uh, set up. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what we got going on here. Just so you know, we are uh, back probed into our primary ignition of a coil and also back probed into a fuel injector control circuit. So uh, the scope is set up like that. Let me see if I can get you guys zoomed in. The lights give me a little bit of challenging uh, conditions here hopefully that works and we are grounded at one point over here this is like the only ground on these transit vans kind of funny how they do that isn't it i don't know where else you can get a good ground on it maybe on the block but that's okay nevertheless uh, we are using uh, the hand tech actuators that are supplied with the scope these are the uh, 20 to 1 is what they say it's the ht-201 20 to 1 uh, 10 megahertz attenuators Guys, I'm using this because this is not my scope, and you, anytime we're scoping primary uh, ignition and even fuel injectors, you can get a high spike. Could possibly do some damage. I don't want to damage a piece of equipment that is not mine. So let's go ahead and take a look at our scope setup here. I have, uh, once again, done a factory reset on this, so we're back to uh, baseline, square one. And as you guys recall, we click on each of the channel menus to turn them off. We only want to have channel one and channel two hooked up here. Um, and also, just so you know, I'm gonna click on this and we can choose our uh, attenuator here. We're gonna go 20X for channel one and also 20X for channel two. And that's good. So I lost my channel two, there we go. So you can see uh, both these channels are uh, set up here. I'm gonna adjust, uh, let's see, I wanna go ahead and adjust uh, channel uh, 2. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. I don't like having it that high. I want to bring this down so we're more at a line like this. And I'm also going to adjust channel 1 down a bit. So we got these like this. So we can see what's going to go on here. And as we set the scope up, as we noted last time, uh, you don't want to have this at such a uh, fast sample rate. You see we're at one microsecond per division. That's way too fast for what we got going on in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this up to say, oh, let's go uh, you know, 20 milliseconds division. That's, that's quite a bit of time up there. And uh, that's gonna be our buffer for this. We're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up and see what we capture here. So with this type of sample rate, um, if I hit the stop button, you're going to see that I really don't have much to zoom into. This is our whole buffer. You are seeing the entire buffer on the screen here. So if I hit the zoom button, uh, really we don't have a whole lot to uh, see. This is our entire buffer filled up as I'm scrolling through. So that's not enough. So I'm going to hit the zoom button again. I'm going to hit the run button. And let's go ahead and make the scope work a little bit, number one. Let's go ahead and put, uh, let's see, uh, 100 milliseconds division on there. So that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and go for 200. Let's see when we get this uh, a rolling pattern. There you go. So now we have quite a bit of a big buffer. Let's go 500 and see what it looks like. So we have five seconds of time on the screen. That's really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the stop button. Um, and let's take a look at what we have if we were to zoom in here. Let's go ahead and zoom in at our secondary, or I should say primary ignition, my fault there. Let's go ahead and bring it up. Beautiful, nice pattern. I like that, that's great. Let's go ahead and look at our injector, see what that looks like. And we still have a beautiful injector pattern. That's, that's awesome. That's a nice 
uh, big buffer that we have and we can still see what's going on. I'm going to hit the run button one more time. Let's go ahead and let's be crazy about it. Let's put 20 seconds of time on the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and rev this thing up once. And go ahead and turn it off. And let's see what type of pattern we have here. Let's see if we still have something that's usable. That's a large buffer. It's a lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the zoom button. Hit the zoom. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to drag this over. Guys, look at this. I'm really happy with this. This is a good injector pattern. We can see our pintle bump. That's pretty good. Let's take a look at what our ignition looks like. Beautiful. I have enough to work with there. I'm not uh, not knocking this by any means. Now we were talking about the rotation rollers in the comments on the last video, and somebody had mentioned that if you uh, put the rulers out and then do the math channel, you'll be able to measure in degrees of rotation. Um, that's what I was hoping for. Let's go ahead and see if we can. Let's see if we can make that happen. Let's get basically uh you can see probably we're losing a little bit of resolution on our scope actually to be honest with you so we're at uh that's at our where were we at we we're at two seconds uh per division so we had 20 seconds of time on the screen you can see how sometimes we don't have a uh, secondary event you see guys how you see this high firing kvs here on our uh, blue channel i'm moving yellow but uh, you're missing it here. That's because we're starting to lose a little bit of sampling. So maybe two seconds. The division's uh, pushing it too much. Look, let's hit the run button. I'm going to make one more capture at uh, one second per division. So we have 10 seconds of capture time on our screen, which is still quite a bit of data to capture. Go ahead and start this thing up. I'm going to let it run for a second. Hit the gas pedal once. Go ahead and turn it off. And I'm going to go back here and hit the stop button on the scope. So you can see we captured all that data on our scope there. You can see the firing uh, KVs are a little more uniform, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and zoom in once again. And uh, I started talking about those rotation rollers. What I wanted to talk about was the three bars up here. I want to adjust this. I want to, This is a six-cylinder vehicle. I just want to see how it divides this out. you got to hit the backspace button, type in six, hit enter. And I want this set up for 300, uh, I'm sorry, 720 degrees. 720, enter. Now we have 720 degrees of rotation we should have on our rotation rollers. But you see here, where's my other ruler? It's right here, and it says 360. I'm trying to capture that. It still says 360. Let me try to enter this in again. I don't understand why sometimes it changes and sometimes it doesn't. Let's see. Let me drag this back. So why doesn't it change to 720? I want 720 degrees of rotation. Let me click on this again. It says 720 here. I'm going to hit back, type it in one more time. This has been kind of clunky for me as I was messing around with it. OK, there it goes. Maybe I didn't hit OK. I may have not hit OK, which is OK for you guys to see what my error was. Uh, we're all learning all the time. So I'm trying to drag. Oh, there's my zero. I want to drag this zero to let's say this one our primary gets turned on right here and our 720 to the same point so that is nice and what it did is it marked out uh, so now we have 0 120 240 360 so each each of the markings is for uh, it could be a cylinder event I guess is what we're getting at um, but I'm trying to figure out I was told if we turn on a math channel uh, after we have the rulers out that we can measure something here, measure our degrees, but I don't see anything happening like that. Let me go ahead and turn on a cursor. Um, I'm looking to find out how I can measure degrees. So I have the, uh, also a time cursor on, and I'm looking for it. There's a lot of, that's, this is for Math Channel. And where is my other cursor at? Let's see, I'm going to put this one here. Here's this one here. And these are not measuring in degrees that I can see. Everything's in seconds and hertz. Guys, if I'm missing something, be sure to write in the comments and let me know what, what I'm missing here. Um, but while we have this uh, scope on here, let's go over triggers one more time because I think it's that important. So many technicians are messing around with scopes, trying to get into it, but they're not understanding triggering. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, see what we can come up with. I'm going to turn off all these uh, rulers here, and I'm going to once again uh, start my car up. 
Okay, we've got the vehicle running here and we've got a pattern bouncing around. So right now we're at uh, 20 milliseconds. Now the pattern's dancing around because we don't have uh, actual triggered event going on that's uh, persistent. So we can go ahead and have more time and less time. Let's go ahead and get even less time. I wanna see a nice uh, primary ignition pattern here so we don't see it. So there's two ways we can go about uh, accessing the scope menu. And I didn't, uh, I failed to mention this in the first uh, video. So you have the, the upper menu right all the way up the top of the screen. You have the trigger menu, or you can actually go to the menu that's on the left hand side. So let me go ahead and show you that. So there's a trigger menu straight up to the top. I'm going to click on this and it opens up this trigger menu. But also, if I click on the menu button, we get this menu button here. So we can get to the triggers that way. So click back on the trigger and we're going to go on channel two. And we are triggering off of channel two right now. I don't know exactly where it's triggering off of channel two. So let's go ahead and bring our level, uh, change our trigger level. Let's bring it up here. And where is my trigger cursor at? Let's go ahead and get that in the middle. So I had to drag that out, but that's that's pretty. I like it, that's, that's really nice. I haven't messed around with the filtering of the channels much on this scope at all. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna click on channel two and uh, we can put a low pass filter on here. That kind of cleaned it up. Do you guys see what happened there? Let me turn it back off. So you got a lot of noise and stuff there. Low pass, we'll turn it on a low pass. And that's at 30,000 hertz. Let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and drag this around a little bit. So I want to click on kilohertz, but it still says megahertz up here. I don't know. Let me try hitting the stop button. Does that make a difference on the filtering? Well, actually, I know what the big question is. Can we filter after the event happens? A lot of the um, other brand scopes, what is it, the Autel I've ran into or if you filter as you're capturing, uh, it's locked, it's baked into the pattern. You can't ever change it. Or if you uh, want to filter after the capture, maybe it doesn't work. I've had that happen. Let's take a look at this and see what happens. So I have the, uh, the pattern stopped and I want to go back in my channel and turn off this filter. So it looks like right now it's not changing. So you guys, when you're capturing with this, what you get is what you get. So there we are, uh, put the low pass on. Let me go ahead and turn that up a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. So we're on megahertz. This is interesting. I can't change this. Ah, this is frustrating. I was playing with this before. It still says megahertz. Once I mess with this setting, I can't seem to change it. I can't, I'm at 20.3 megahertz. Why can't I go to kilohertz? It's kind of uh, clunky if you ask me of how it works. So right here, we've got this low pass filter on 30 kilohertz. And if I hit the stop button, if I turn off this low pass, nothing changes, we're stuck. So let me go ahead and run it and also go back over here. I'm gonna put this on full so we get a nice noisy pattern, what's really going on. And I'm gonna hit the stop button and also go back into that channel and see if I can put a low pass on and I can't. So as you see there, you can't change filtering. What you capture is what you capture, but that's okay. Overall, uh, I think this is a nice tool. You guys let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I do appreciate everybody's support. If you like this content, please do like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, have a great day. We'll see you. Bye-bye.